Animation has been a part of our lives for decades. Enthusiasts or not, whatever type of consumer you are, the denial of the medium's impact on entertainment is simply an injustice. In a medium that's lasted as long as it has, it's become a must to track the different eras that have followed up to the present day. With so many things seeming to have changed and yet some things were never changed at all, but I won't elaborate. Nowadays, we've been blessed with an abundance of story-driven cartoons which have had the habit of opening up new conversations for people to have with different topics that previously would not have flown just about a decade ago. We have more diversity, albeit in varying forms of quality, and the investment in these newer shows building up interconnected plots and storylines are always a treat to witness when executed properly. However, I think there's still a little problem that I kind of want to bring up which has lasted for much longer than it probably should, but just hear me out. So generally speaking, there are two types of cartoons that people watch nowadays, episodic and story driven. Episodic has always been a part of this medium as the show's premise is clear but there's no super complicated plots happening at all times. Usually the core of the series is explored and expanded upon but you usually aren't thrown into any major plot points or details you have to pay attention to in order to understand what you're watching. This may be a bare bones definition but I genuinely believe it's a broad topic to cover once you venture out into a network in its catalog. Story driven shows obviously still have a general General premise, but its plots are more built upon. The character interactions, the obstacles needed to overcome, any antagonists working in the background, the lessons everyone learns, everything is usually interconnected with development being much more crucial in the process. But a few weeks ago something caught my attention which made me want to make this video in the first place. So a few weeks ago, I came across a post on Twitter sent by someone on Discord detailing some interactions between Bob Roth, one of the co-creators of The Ghost of Molly McGee, and some random fans. These fans basically were talking about thinking that the show would get super dark at some point, and Bob Roth decided to take it upon himself to bluntly deny any of it. Now obviously, these are just a few individuals, and anyone can make the argument that this is simply a small minority in this specific case. However, to me at least, it's an indication of a problem that I thought was left behind many years ago. So to summarize, the following statement is made to sound much more complicated than what it actually is, but hopefully it makes sense. A decent amount of cartoon fans have internalized embarrassment towards these episodic cartoons, or more recent cartoons to be more specific. Like obviously there's always going to be a big amount of respect for shows like Phineas and Ferb because they're considered classics in their own right, and rightfully so. I just think the way society outside this cartoon bubble and the way that others view animation in general is a major contributor to this. Arguably the biggest in this conversation. Now I'm going to make the assumption that you've been or at least seen how non-animation watchers can react to modern cartoons. Nowadays I think it's a lot easier to try and convince others to watch story driven tunes with how invested people are into more plot focused shows. I mean look at phase 4 of the MCU and more recently Squid Game. Same, right. That's the same thing with Subway. That's the same thing with Subway. No, don't know you're it. pushing there's, me into the water! There's a, there's, a, there's a bunch of bitches in here who fucking hate on Subway. Oh, 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 I like I like, I like, I like, I like Quiznos more, but Subway is still good. Yes, yeah, sir. How did I die? I mean, how did I die? I'm in the green. How did I die? Geek, why are you twerking? What's going on? <laughs> Wait, oh shit, it's Geek versus Geek. Why, it's geek versus why is Geek busting it down, bro? What's going on? <laughs> I've personally yet to catch up on the MCU, but both examples have captivating plots that have everyone talking whenever new content is teased or released. So theoretically speaking at least, it's just the process of convincing others that animation can provide the very same thing with the advantage of more visual expression. With episodic cartoons though, they seem to fall back into this childish narrative that people pull out whenever they shame someone for liking animation at an age older than like. 10. So therefore, I think that sort of mindset is somewhat ingrained into a lot of cartoon fans with varying levels of course. It's already fairly difficult to talk to people about animation in school and stuff without mentioning the usual classics like Adventure Time, Regular Show, blah blah blah. I can only imagine being an adult trying to do the same things at college or even a general working environment full of colleagues and such. Like what if not even Family Guy and The Simpsons are enough anymore? The arguments in the base towards adult animation is a whole different conversation in of itself. You can watch the Roundtable's video on the state of adult animation if you really want some elaboration on the subject. Now quickly going back to the Bob Ruff Twitter responses, I do wonder how many people have the misconception that overarching stories are dark and all. Like, I really don't want the ghost of Molly McGee to follow that path because I personally think the show is excellent the way it's going. The animation is really solid, character dynamics are executed well, the jokes are actually consistently hilarious. 
The songs are great, and the show has some prominent representation in its characters. Overall, it's just a fun and enjoyable new show in my opinion. Now, I wouldn't stop watching the show if everything suddenly became super serialized and lore based. I'd want to see if those things are handled well, obviously. But I wouldn't be able to help but feel a little bummed compared to when the show wasn't too focused on anything, but the dynamic duo's navigation in the new environment and getting into hijinks along the way. It kind of reminds me of Star vs. and how that show slowly became very caught up in its increasingly complicated plot changes. For most of season 1, it was really about Star and Marco doing whatever and fighting Gluto through multiple dimensions. A simple but clear premise. A few seasons later, and now there's messed up relationships, off-screen breakups, underwhelming villains, and the betrayal of a kingdom's own queen which led to the infamous finale which had everything crashing and burning. Or maybe it wasn't as bad as I remember. I might rewatch the series at some point. The point is, I think these episodic shows should be given just a little more attention from the internet side of things, just the way they are. I'd really want to see more Big City Greens discussion outside of whenever a random meta clip blows up on Twitter or something, and it'd also be really nice if Craig of the Creek had a burst of popularity back when it first premiered as opposed to last year. All of these can and should be enjoyed and discussed as much as these lore induced cartoons, even if it's just for the sake of liking them. It's totally fine for you to enjoy one or the other. Or both. You shouldn't be afraid to say that you really like Wee Bear Bears or Teen Titans Go or anything like that. And there's no obligation for you to try and justify it to others on why you watch either. If someone dismisses your interest in animation, it's their loss. Let them continue to watch Grey's Anatomy or something. I, I don't know. At that point, it's their issue if they're not getting off their high horse to check something out. But I am interested in what you think. This is just a quick topic that I wanted to open up, but I want to know if what I've been saying makes any sort of sense. And if you respectfully disagree, I'd also like to hear that out. In, in the comments at least. But before this video ends, I just want to mention some quick things. One, yes, I haven't uploaded in 10 months, but all you need to know is that I won't make any sorts of promises towards uploading anymore. So my upload schedule, if you can even call it that, is just anytime I feel like it. I do have a Twitter account you can follow for more consistent updates on what's happening with me if you are interested. Hopefully I can get my uploading together for next year, but again, no promises. But this is the Geek TCM, and I have a lot of homework to catch up on, so I gotta go.